Topping today's news, Prime Minister Davis rejects the opposition's critique. COVID testing at the borders eliminated and more healthcare workers on the way. Good evening, folks. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. Thanks for joining us. Prime Minister Philip Davis is wrapping up the 2022-2023 national budget in the House of Assembly today, and he slammed the opposition for their continued criticism that the Progressive Liberal Party's New Day government's budget is fiscally irresponsible. During his budget contribution on Wednesday, opposition leader Michael Pintard charged that the government has one set of rules for them and another set of rules for everyone else. As he called the government out for being in breach of the Procurement Act, the Fiscal Strategy Act, and the Debt Management Act, all of which he says this administration is in violation of. Well, the Prime Minister says today he welcomes thoughtful debate about how best to confront these challenges, but not partisan attacks not made in good faith. But let me say, lectures about fiscal responsibility from folks who routine, routinely fail to meet their own revenue projections who borrowed over three billion dollars with little to show for it, who spent 20 million dollars on sidewalks during a pandemic when people were struggling to survive. The same people who poured 200 million dollars of taxpayers' money into the Grand Lucayne and then failed to land a good deal for the hotel, taking lectures, taking lectures from the authors of those fake fiascos? Please. That doesn't make too much sense to me. The Prime Minister did not stop there in his chastisement. He says while he is a patient man, he has his limits. Really, how is it that the same crew who failed to close a single significant new investment during their entire term in office made no meaningful attempts to diversify our economy somehow now imagine themselves experts on economic growth. It is. <laughs> Their plan for economic growth was to raise VAT by 60%. Yes. And we all know how that turned out. Yeah. And how should we respond when they pontificate about transparency when they kept so many key details of their pandemic spending secret, yep. wow. hiding behind the endless renewed emergency orders. Yep. Prime Minister Davis contends that this budget includes new policies that will move the country and economy forward. While he acknowledges that times are still very tough and many Bahamians are back to work, he says there is a lot more to do to ensure that everyone who wants to work can work. He says this is a budget that delivers the foundation for change and renewal. Meanwhile, as of this coming Sunday, all COVID-19 vaccinated individuals will not need a COVID-19 test to enter the country. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Davo making that long-awaited announcement during the House proceedings on Wednesday evening. Prior to that announcement, Minister of Tourism and Investments and Aviation, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper, announced that the Bahamas travel visa will no longer be required for international travelers. The same was done away with for Bahamians late last year. As for his announcement, Dr. Davil says the decision to remove the testing protocol for vaccinated travelers was science-based. And I am pleased to report Inclusive of removal of the travel health visa on Sunday, the 19th of June, 2022, at 12, 1 a.m., announced by the Deputy Prime Minister early this morning, effective June the 19th, 2022, at 12, 01, the Ministry of Health and Wellness will also remove the testing requirements for all vaccinated persons entering the Bahamas. According to Dr. Davil, health officials also made a decision to remove the testing after getting positive feedback from neighboring nations on the country's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. He notes that 
follow-up meetings at the Summit of the Americas last week solidified many plans, inclusive of the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention announcement of the removal of COVID testing for those travelers into the United States. Unvaccinated people will still be required to produce a negative COVID-19 test prior to arrival in country. As for COVID vaccines for children, the health minister announced that the government has secured more than 24,000 Pfizer pediatric vaccines by way of COVAX. However, he says the government is in no way trying to force children to take the vaccine. The need for pediatric vaccines stem from calls for the vaccines from families. After much negotiation, we secured more than 24,000 doses of Pfizer pediatric vaccine by way of the COVAX facility, at no particular point we want to create the impression that the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of Health is going to force children to take the vaccine. This is a collaborative effort stemmed by the family and the parent. I assure you, absolutely, 100%. But it is important that we have the vaccine in country because many families are asking for it for their children. Some don't want it, but some are asking for it. Calls for vaccines for school-aged children came last month after several schools had to close due to COVID-19 cases. Dr. Darvel says the 24 doses or the 24,000 doses of vaccine will be in country in short order. The government has approved the hiring of nearly 500 allied health care workers. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Dovell, in his budgetary contribution on Wednesday, says since 2016, he has observed tremendous deficiencies in the health care system, not only here in the capital and in Grand Bahama, but throughout the country. He further states that his ministry is working to address these deficiencies. Add to that, a new program in collaboration with the Public Hospitals Authority, the PHA, will start soon. Minister Darvel says this training program will be afforded to public health care professionals and will give them the opportunity for recertification and in-house training to ensure quality care for Bahamians. The health minister says he has heard the cries of the people and hopes this academy will improve the health care service. The Public Hospitals Authority will engage in a national blood drive on Grand Bahama and here in New Providence simultaneously this Saturday. And they are encouraging Bahamians and residents to give the gift of life as the blood you donate saves lives. In Grand Bahama, the Drip Drip Challenge blood drive in aid of the Rand Memorial Hospital blood bank will go from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Rand Memorial Hospital Laboratory in Freeport. A floating trophy will be awarded to the group with the most donors. Here in New Providence, the Everett Miller National Blood Drive will be at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Everett Miller is the former blood bank supervisor. Remember, before you donate blood, eat at least 30 minutes prior to donating and bring a government ID. Additionally, the blood bank will provide free screening tests to ensure you are healthy enough to donate. Do not attempt to donate blood if you are coughing, have a fever, or are having difficulty breathing. There has been recruitment of additional attendance officers who will work with schools, parents, school boards, police, urban renewal, and social services to ensure that school-aged children are present in school during school hours. Education, Technical, and Vocational Training Minister Glennis Hannah Martin advising as much during her contribution to the budget debate earlier this week. Minister Hannah Martin says her ministry plans to get all children back in school with regular attendance and no running the streets, adding that the Office of the Prime Minister has set the education priority for the attendance rate for students to be at 95% by December 2022. We will not accept the Prime Minister's office um, delivery unit says 95%. We will not accept a state of affairs where school-aged children are engaging in truancy. You see it all, everywhere you go. You see children there, you know, for some reason. So the, uh, the so-called, what they call the chronic norm. And in this regard, we recently advertised in the daily publications, Guardian Tribune, for the recruitment of attendance officers, that's what they call them, who will work with the schools, the parents, the school boards, the police, urban renewal, and social services. It will not be trendy to be on the streets if you should be in school. 
noting that children, even though many were attending the virtual platform during the pandemic, have not benefited from virtual learning. Minister Hannah Martin says by September, all public school children will be diagnosed for learning loss and placed in accelerated programs so that they will be able to catch up. So even those who are online fully, you, it, they have not benefited, many have not benefited the way in which you would have wished. To address the crisis of learning loss and to ensure strategic and precise response, a request for proposal <clears throat> to diagnose all students and create an instructional plan for recovery has been launched. By September, <clears throat> when children return to school, each child at every level will be diagnosed for learning loss and in respect of each child based on the levels of loss, they will have appropriately designed acceleration programs to allow them to catch up. According to the education minister, it is important for the future of our country to be well educated and children should be given the opportunity to learn and get the education they need. We'll take a break here and we'll be right back after these commercials.